हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुनील कुमार पीजी टू कॉमर्स केंद्रीय विद्यालय सेक्टर एट आर के पुरुम लेट मी वेलकम यू टू आर अनदर एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ बिजनेस स्टडीज क्लास ट्वेल्थ स्टूडेंट्स इन आर प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट इट्स मीनिंग इट्स माइक्रो एंड मैक्रो फोर्सेस द फोर्सेस व्हिच अफेक्ट्स द बिजनेस ट्रांजैक्शंस ऑफ द बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस इन आर प्रेजेंट टॉपिक दैट इज प्लानिंग इट इज correlated with business environment very very closely so whatever you have understood in our previous chapter this chapter is going to correlate and will help you in understanding all the concepts based on planning in this chapter we will study about the meaning of planning definition of planning features of planning process of planning importance of planning types of plans and at last demerits of planning or you can say limitations of planning students let we start with meaning of planning planning is a process of deciding in advance what is to be done when it is to be done how it is to be done and by whom it should be done actually planning bridges the gap where we are studying today and where we would like to reach it helps where we are standing right now it means what is our position in the market say our position in the market right now is second and where we would like to reach that is number one position in the market so students we have to see how we can go from second position to the first position for us right now the objective is to become number one in the market planning helps in deciding that what courses of action should be taken by our business organization so that we can achieve the number one position in the market planning first of all sets the objectives of the business organization and then it helps in developing the premises it helps in formulating the supportive plans then after evaluating the plans it helps in taking the best plan which will help the organization in the achievement of organization objectives which you have already understood becoming number 1 in the market students now we look at the definition given by the experts in the field of management according to mr alfred and bt planning is the thinking process the organized foresight the vision based on facts and experience that is required for intelligent action students now it is clear with the help of this definition that planning is a process and you have to think a lot about this process and in order to be an effective planner you need to have vision you need to have intelligent thought you need to have sound judgment and if you are having all these three dimensions then certainly you will be able to draw best planning which will help in the achievement of your organizational objectives as we have taken the example recently that we are having the second position in the market and our objective is to become number 1 in the market and if the planners if they are keeping all these things in their mind and if they are applying it then certainly they will help in the achievement of becoming number 1 in the market Now students let me start understanding the features of planning what are the features actually these are the properties these are the characteristics of planning what planning is made of the very first feature of planning is primary function of management planning is the primary function of management as we have studied that management has five major functions that is planning organizing staffing directing and controlling and planning is the very first function which provides basis for all other functions of management if this function is not performed properly the rest of four functions are of no use like in planning if we have decided that we have to become number 1 in the market then the planning will tell you what are the courses of action you have to undertake what are the things you need to consider and by following the same you will be becoming number 1 in the market but mere thinking and deciding and making planning will not help you in taking you to the first position it will take a lot of hard work dedication and the commitment not only part of the lower level of management but also from the middle and top level of management and if they are committed then certainly they will be able to achieve organizational objectives the second most important feature of planning is it is a goal oriented process what is the meaning of goal oriented process 
planning cannot be taken into consideration without having an objective. You need to decide what you would like to achieve and only after that you can decide what type of actions we have to perform so that we can achieve the objective. Here we have taken the example that we would like to be number one in the market. If we are having this goal in our mind, only then we can decide what we have to do actually so that we'll be becoming number one. So planning is a goal-oriented process. Now our next feature of planning is pervasive. It means it is applicable to all the levels of management. It is applicable to the top level of management, middle level of management and the lower level of management. At the top level of management, all the policies, programs, strategies are decided. Middle level of management helps in chucking out the plans of the production, finance, marketing, personnel, business studies, all these things we have to take into consideration. So here, pervasive means the planning is not only restricted to the business organizations, rather planning is required in each and every sphere of life. If you talk of the religious organizations, if you talk of educational institutions like the schools and colleges, everywhere you'll find the planning is required. So the planning is pervasive. It is required at each and every level of management in all the spheres of the life. Now, our next feature of planning is continuous process. Planning, in fact, is a continuous process. The planning is set for a fixed time period, say, for one month, quarterly, half yearly, or annually. So once the time is set in, the objectives will be set in by the organization. And after the expiry of one year, we'll see whether the objectives set before one year are met or not. What are the changes which are required so that we can have another courses of action which will help us in the achievement of organizational objectives. So here our entire concentration will be on that what are the things, what are the changes taking place in the market. As we have studied in macro factors, so there are economical, social, political, legal and technological environment taking place. And if the business organization, because of these changes, because of this environment poses threat to the existence of the business organization, so they have to ensure that in changed circumstances, what are the actions to be performed so that all the threats imposed by these macro factors can be easily taken out. So planning is a continuous process. It is not ending after a particular year or after a specified time period, maybe 10 years or the 20 years or the 30 years. It is an unending process. The another feature of planning is planning is futuristic or you can say forward looking. Planning is always done for the future. It is never ever done for the past. But the managers who are given the responsibility to look it into the matter, look it into the future, and then decide what courses of action the managers have to perform in order to achieve organizational objectives. As I mentioned, that it is never ever done for the past. But certainly, the past experiences will help the manager in deciding future courses of action. They must be keeping in their mind that in the previous years they have taken certain decisions and what were the outcome of those decisions. So in this year, when they are going to take the decisions, they will be keeping in their mind the outcomes which they had in the previous years. And now they will be able to take better decisions. And they will be able to take the better decisions only when they are scanning the environment. They are scanning the macro environment importantly. And if they are doing so, if they can do it to the perfection, certainly they will do it for the betterment of the business organization. Our next feature of planning is, planning is a mental exercise. Obviously, it is an intellectual process. The manager who are given the responsibility of taking out planning for the business organization must have a very sound mind. He must have intelligent imagination. He must have sound judgment. And if he's having these features, certainly, he will be able to take out the organization to the another level. Here, the manager has to take all the previous activities, all the plans taken in the previous years into consideration. And then they will be thinking about the future, that what type of activities will help the organization actually in the achievement of organizational objectives. So here, mental exercise comprises of that what type of activities the organization has to perform. And yes, it is an important feature of planning. So students, now here we have come to the end of the features of planning. You have understood that it is having all the properties which are required to be dynamic in the life. 
Now students, let we have our next topic that is planning process. In planning process, the first of all, we'll take it up, setting objectives. So this is the very first step which we have to take in the planning process. In it, we have to decide what we would like to achieve in the near future. For example, the business organization in the previous year have attained a profit of 20%. And in this year, the organization is planning to have a profit of 30%. So now, here the objective is set in. This objective is set by the top level of management. Now, at the second step of planning process, we are having developing premises. The managers, after setting the objectives, they have to foresight, they have to look it into the future. They have to decide what is going to happen in the future. We all know that future is full of risk and uncertainty. And the managers, they have to use their mind they have to think what could be the possible aspects of the future. And by keeping those in their minds, they will be developing the premises. They will be developing the supportive plans which will help the organization in the achievement of organizational objectives. At third step, we are having the search for alternative causes of action. Once the objectives are set that our profit should be 30% as compared to 20% of the last year, now we have to look for the alternatives. What activities can be done so that our profit can be maximized. Let me take an example. The type of alternatives our organization will be having. Number one, we may increase the price of the existing product. Number two, we can import the machines which can produce the things very, very quickly. Thirdly, we can use our waste resources in the manufacturing of stuffed toys. So here, there are few alternatives which business organization may have for the achievement of 30% profits as its objective. Now, in our next process, we are having evaluating alternative courses of action. Once we are having various alternatives in front of us, now it is our responsibility to evaluate each and every one to the perfection. Let me take out the very first which we have taken. That is increasing the prices of the existing product. The management will be thinking a lot about that. And they will be finding ultimately, if they are increasing the prices, the existing customers may leave buying the products of our company and they may move to the another company. So it's not a good option to increase the prices of our product. The second option here is buying the machinery. If you are going to buy the machinery, it will include the cost. It comprises a huge amount of finance which is required by the business organization. Now the finance manager has to manage that finance. Say, in order to buy the machinery, 500 crores rupees are required. The finance manager will see that how he can get 500 crore rupees from the market. Should the manager issue shares in the market, or issue debentures in the market, or take a bank loan, or take the loan from the subsidiaries, accept the public deposits, accept the fixed deposit, what are the possible sources of finance the finance manager can have? Let me tell you, students, whatever sources of finance the manager will be having, he will be analyzing the cost attached to that. Say the 500 crore rupees is taken from the bank and bank will be charging interest at the rate of 13%. So 13% of 100 crore would be 13 crore rupees. It's a huge amount which business has to pay in the form of interest. So again, it's not a better option for the business organization. The third one was to utilize the waste material in the manufacturing of stuffed toys. Here, the management will be thinking, here, there is very less investment required and business can easily make the stuffed toys and by selling the same in the market, business will be able to increase its profits from the level of 20% to 30%. So after the evaluation of all these alternatives, now we'll move to the another step of the planning process. That is selecting an alternative. After evaluating all the three alternatives very, very deeply, the management will decide, yes, it's better to make stuffed toys so that we can sell the toys in the market and we can make money. So that is the option which will give more profits to the business and the cost increased will be very less as compared to the profits generated. So certainly the management will be selecting the alternative that is manufacturing of stuffed toys. Once the alternative action has been selected by the organization, based on evaluation, now they have to implement that particular alternative. So the next step in the process of planning is implementing the plan. 
Now it is decided we are going to manufacture stuffed toys with the help of waste resources, the waste material. Now business has to see what type of machines are required to convert the waste material into stuffed toys. And here the business organization have to implement this particular plan. Afterwards, the business has to ensure by proper follow-up action whether all the activities which were decided well in advance are carried out properly or not. What type of changes are required to be incorporated? Now students, we have come to an end of the meaning of planning, definition of planning, features of planning, and the process of planning. And I think you have understood all these concepts since these are correlated with the business environment, which is very exciting topic in our business studies in class 12, which we have discussed in our previous episode. I'm sure now that you are correlating the concepts of planning with the business environment which we have done earlier.